Hi everybody and welcome back. I am a hacker and it's really nice to have you on board. In this video, we'll look at how to log in with the Bender's user account. It is a challenge from OAS Shop. And just to add a little bit to the background of this video, I'm doing a series on CTF that is hacking into OAS Juice Shop. It is just a walkthrough for beginner to learn how to approach certain CTF and how to getting started with hacking or ethical hacking in general. Anyway, let's get started. So this is basically OAS Juice Shop um, in the scoreboard of the website. And here you can see logging in with the vendors user account challenge, which is a three star challenge. Anyway, we have already done the administrator as well as the gyms user account. If you are interested in that, you can watch those videos. I will link it down in the description as well as we are in the middle of this series. So I have already configured and did everything. If you are new to the OSG shop and don't know anything about it, I will link the entire playlist in the description so you can watch it for yourself. Let's get started. Okay, so in order to log in with the vendor's account, the first thing we need to do is come over to the login page and you can find that by coming over to the main page and then in the accounts you can find the login page. Once you come over to the login page, you can see right over here we have email and password. So in order to log in with the Bender's account, we need his email and then the password. So in order to find the email of Bender, what you need to do is you can use something called the email harvester, which you can run on this website and find all of the emails in this website. But in our case, to find the email of Bender, it's not a big deal because we have few items listed on the website so I can look through one by one like suppose I come over to the apple juice and, and look at the reviews you can see we have an email from admin at juice shop and I can look through one by one we don't have a review right over here we have a review right over here and here is the vendors vendors email address the same as we did with the gym's email in the last video anyway once we find the email which is Bender at the rate juice as such op i can copy that come over and paste it in in the email once i paste the email uh, i can then add a single quote and then two dashes as i know that it is vulnerable to sql injection let's open up pycharm and let me make you understand what what is going on let's create a new file by the name of bender.py once I create a new file, let me make you understand what is going on. So I will presume that we have a query, something like select star from users, where user name is equal to this and password is equal to this. So what I'm doing is I insert this email right over here. Like in order to pass this query, what we need is to make this condition true as well as this condition true. Once we make both of them true, then this query would return true and we will get logged in. So what I'm doing right over here is I'm entering this email address which makes this condition true and after that I'm entering single quotes in order to make the rest of the query comment. So what it would do, it would ignore this part of the query and as this all query is true, it will return true and we would get logged in. So it will look something like this. Once I do that, let's come back over to the browser and try to log in by entering a gibberish password. And you can see that I am logged in with the vendor's user account. So this, this was pretty easy, you know. Once more, just to recap, I came over to the login page. Let's log out first and then log in. We came over to the password page and in the email, I entered the email which I found from the front end of the website. Once I did that, I came over, I pasted the email right over here and then added a single quote and then two dashes in order to comment the rest of the query. Anyway, now do, uh, let's do the same thing by writing a Python program for it, uh, which we are doing from the last few videos. So the first thing I would do is import all of the libraries that I need for, in order to do that, what I need is the request library. The request library I need for making a request to the URL that we are working with. The system library we need is to get the arguments from the terminal. And the next thing I need is the URL lib3 for ignoring the HTTPS or not secure warnings. So the first thing I will do is I will write URL lib. 
disable warnings url lib3 exceptions insecure requests what you to do it will disable all of the warnings that we are getting for the not secure and stuff like that i will show you in a bit what kind of errors does it disable the next thing we need is to declare some proxies and i want to do the proxy just to send the request through burp and in the last few videos we are doing that but i haven't showed you how it works and in this video i will show that single quotes http and in order to send the request using burp what you need is to send all of the requests through 127.0.0.1 and the port 8080 and we'll do the same thing for https that would be 127.0.0.1 and the port would be 8080 and i will save that and this would be http and that's it so we have our proxy ready to go the next thing i want is a main function and that would be if underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore main if that is the case we want to call the main function and main function is not yet created but it's wishful thinking anyway let's create that function right now and we have our main function in the main function what i want to do is first i want to try that the user did inserted a url if they didn't i want to print some messages the message would be with a minus because we have an error and that would be person s which would be the name of the program and the next thing would be url so in order to get the name of the program what i can do is i can call the sys and in the six we have rv which stores the program name at the zeroth element and the other arguments from the console in other indexes that is one two three etc i will show it to you in a bit let me share that with you and the next thing would be to show an example that would be person test and sample.com or you can add www as well and this would be the program name as well sys.rv0 because zero stores and the next thing would be sys.exit with a zero once that's done now in the try block what i want to do is if they enter the url i want to grasp that and that would be in the arg v1 i will save that come over to the terminal and run the program by writing python cd administrator and then python vendor.py once I run it, you would see that we have printed the usage instructions, which is we haven't entered the URL. Anyway, we also have an error and that is misspelled exit. Exit is right like this. Anyway, let's run it again and you would see that if we don't enter a URL, you would see we get the usage instruction. But if I enter the URL, which is local host 3000, and you will see we don't get any error anyway if i come over and just to show you that in system rv suppose i print system rv0 and then one two three one two three and save it now come over here and say arg v1 rv2 rv3 so this would be two this would be three and this would be and you can see that in the first element of the rv we have local host and in the second we have rv2 and rv4 and in the zeroth element we have this program name which is bender.py so now that you are clear about the rv let's continue with our program and that program would be after the except we'll create another function or we will call another function right over here that would be login as bender and that is not yet created but it's wishful thinking you know we can create that right now login as bender once the function gets created what i want to do is i want to pass the url to this function by doing like so and if we come over here in the login I will turn on the developer tools in my Firefox and then copy the vendor's email 
Once I copy the vendor's email, I can paste it right over here and then comma dash dash and then enter some password and click on login. Right over here, you can see that we are sending a post request to the login page. We are making a request to this URL. So I'll take some notes and I will paste that in. We already have this URL in the URL. For this, we want to create another variable that would be URI and I will store that thing right over here. Anyway, the next thing we, we are doing is we are sending some data and that data is right over here. So I will copy that and I will paste that right over here as well. I will create another variable by the name of data and make it equal to the data we have. So that is the first thing we have is email. And the next thing we have is password. And don't worry about the single and double quotes. They, they work the same. They are different, but in most cases they work the same. And for password, I want to enter some gibberish. Once I do that, the next thing I want to do is I want to make a request. That would be R is equal to request dot post remember we imported a library by the name of request and to that the first thing i want to pass is the url plus the uri so just like this anyway the next thing i want to pass is the data which would be data is equal to data and the next thing i want to pass is the proxies but before doing that i will open up burp suit okay once the burp suit gets opened i can come back to my code and write proxies is equal to proxies and save the program and just print the r.text and save the program come back over to the terminal and try to send the request and you can see that we have logged in with the uh, vendor's user account right over here we have a success if you check in the response you can see that we have this response for success and you can see that same thing with the term in the terminal as well if we log in with the vendor's user account what we get is an jwt authentication his email and his bid so you can confirm that by coming over right over here is his bid is this and his email is this and this was the request for logging in with the vendor's user account anyway we have our challenge completed but i just want to show one thing and that is what these proxies do so we had our proxies right over here that's why we sent our request using this burp and we received a response right over here in burp if I remove these proxies, it will work the same, but the only difference would be that we will not receive any uh, request right over here in Burp. And if I add the proxies again, run the program, you would see we will be having request right over here in the Burp. So that's why the proxies are important in order to propagate or navigate every response or channel through the every response through burp so that once something gets messed up so we can debug our code pretty easily and we can find what missings also we will be having all of the history right over here in this burp suppose we are running request in in a loop for some uh, for something like a ddos attack or something like that so we will store all of the history and everything if something gets missed up or uh, mixed up we'll be having all of the errors and everything right over here so this is pretty much it for this video you can enhance on it you can get all of the data from right over here by using a json uh, library and getting the token and email and everything but for me this is pretty much it if you have any questions or suggestions for other videos you can let me know have a pleasant day bye for now and i will see you somewhere on the internet